We just finished finding logarithms using a table in linear interpolation. Now we're going to find anti-logarithms. We've got 16 previous videos, and if you didn't see the video before this one, it's linked in this description. You really need to see it. Unless you understand anti-logarithms and linear interpolation, there's a good chance you might become lost or confused. Okay? So as I said in the previous video, Tables are made by giving function values for a continuous function, and we can use the given data to find values between them with a procedure called interpolation. And it's just this method that you find approximate function values that are between other values on a table. And it can be done in many ways, the easiest and the most common being linear interpolation. Remember, linear means straight line. We're going to use it in relation to the table of common lo logarithms that are found online or found in your appendix of your textbook. We talked about common logarithms in video 12.5b and using the table to find them, okay? So this linear interpolation, it applies to a table of any continuous functions. So basically what we're saying is if we have all these points on a line, they're linear, and there's a missing point here, and we can see they're all evenly spaced, we can interpolate that that's a 2, okay? So that's basically what we're doing. So now we're going to do it with antilogs, okay? If you're confused about antilogs, you need to go back to 12.5c, click on the description, and you'll find it, okay? So we've discussed how I have this green on purpose because that's our characteristic. We've got a 7 and a minus 10. Well, then our characteristic is a negative 3. It's represented as a 7 minus 10. That equals negative 3, right? We can also see the mantissa, the 0.4122. And then using the table of common logarithms, we locate 0.4122. So when we're trying to find the common logarithm, what we do is we look for this 0.4122 somewhere on here, all right? So you can see here's like 0 0.2122, 0 0.3729. So when we try to look for 0.4122, well, here's 0.4116 and 0.4133. So it's in between 2.58 and 2.59. It's somewhere in between these two numbers, isn't it? So we know it's in between 0.4116 and 0.4133. And that's log 2.58 and log 2.59. It's somewhere around here, okay, because we got 0 0.4122, so it's leaning a little bit closer to this one, okay? What we do is we subtract to find the difference. We subtract this one from this one, and we get a 0 0.0006. We subtract this one from this one. This is the larger number, see? So this is going to be 0 0.0017. So we know that this 0 0.4122 is 6 seventeenths of the distance between this one and this one. It's 6 seventeenths, oh, close to one-third of the way, right? All right, so the antilog of 0 0.4122 is 6 seventeenths of the way between 2.58 and 2.59. Now, because the difference between 2.58 and 2.59 is 0 0.01, see, there's just a little 0 0.01 difference, we take 6 seventeenths of 0 0.01 and add it to 2.58. You'll really understand this if you saw the previous video, okay? So, we do this first, and we get a 0 0.0035. You can actually put 6 divided by 17 times 0 0.01. And... We're going to add it to 2.58, and we round this. This is our approximate amount. There's too many digits here, so we're going to round this, and this 5 is going to tell that 3 to go up to a 4. So the antilog of 7.4122 minus 10 is approximately 2.584 times 10 to the negative third in scientific notation. We can see the characteristic is a negative 3. That's that 7 minus 10. We can see the mantissa is 0.4122. See that? All right. And we can actually, you know, leave it like this. Or we can actually 
move the decimal place over to get rid of the scientific notation if we want, okay? All right, let's try it one more time real quick. It says find anti-log 3.4557. Well, we know when it's like this, there's no minus 10, that that's the characteristic. It's a 3. The mantissa is 0 0.54557. And we locate the 0 0.4557 on here. Well, it's not there, but it's in between 0.4548 and 0.4564, which would be a 2.85 and a 2.86. So it's somewhere between 2.85 and 2.86. And we write down what was on the table, those two that it was in between. We find out how far our 0.557 is from the smaller one, it's 0 0.0009 away from the smaller value. So if I drew that line that I was drawing, okay, and we had the, the 0.4548 here and the 0.4564 here, we'd know that our 0.4557 is going to fall in between here somewhere, right? Okay, so... The difference between this value and this value from the table, those two values, is 0 0.0016. And the difference between the one that we're trying to find and the smaller one is 0 0.0009. So we know it's 9 sixteenths of the way across here. And the difference between these two is a 0 0.01, so we're going to multiply the 9 sixteenths times the 0 0.01, we're going to add it to the 2.85. This is 0 0.005625 on the calculator. We're going to add it to this. We get 2.855625. We're going to round that to 2.856. That 6 tells the 5 to go up to a 6, doesn't it? Now, writing it in scientific notation, we have 2.856 times 10 to the third power, which when we move this and remove the scientific notation, we move that decimal point back, we get 2,856. So anti-log 3.4557 is approximately 2,856. All right? If you're really confused, you need to watch the previous video, and it's just a click away. All right? And we discussed this before, too, because I taught interpolation and extrapolation in eighth grade math. And to inter means to go between, inner, inside. So that means we're finding a value that's inside of other values that are given, okay? To extrapolate means we're given values, but like a trend line, we can see that these are all evenly spaced. So we could say if that's one, two, three, four, that must be five, six, seven. So that's extrapolating. We're, we're approximating what it could be on this trend line because they're all evenly spaced, it makes sense, right? And extra means additional, beyond, more, okay? So to do interpolation, we're going to be finding values inside, and for extrapolation, we're going to be going outside of our given values, okay? Doing it like an estimated guess or figuring it out or using these values to help us do it, all right? And there's going to be links to that grade eight, those grade eight math videos, 14.2a and 14.2b, where I discussed this. And it might be good for you to watch a little review from eighth grade math. It might be real easy for you, and you'll say, oh, gosh, this eighth grade math is so easy, and I totally get it, okay? Our next video is 12.7a, and we're going to solve exponential equations. That means they have variables as exponents, all right? We've got 16 previous videos. There's going to be links to those grade 8 videos. I'm going to add this to the Algebra 2 playlist. And we're getting close to the end of Chapter 12. And that's going to be the end of this playlist for now because I'm not going to get into finite math and the trigonometry, okay, that is in this textbook I'm using as a guide. So I'll see you next video. I'm proud of you. Keep trying. You're almost there. You're almost done with Algebra 2. That's so great. I'll see ya. Bye.